Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Uh, doing a little, going a different direction this time. Uh, I got a punk compilation about six months ago um, that really got me listening to some stuff that I was familiar with but had never really gotten into. Um, it wasn't really, it, it was a, a Nuggets punk uh, compilation. Only half of it was actually punk. There was some punk, some power pop. Um, some proto punk, no, not really proto punk. Some post punk on there, um, some new wave. It was just a mix of kind of the late seven, mid to late seventies New York and uh, London scenes. So you had some Pretenders, um, some Heartbreakers, some Television, um, Flame and Groovies. Uh, just off the top of my head. So it got me checking out a lot of those bands. Like I said, I. I Pretenders, I've had their albums for years. I knew who they were. Um, I knew all the bands on the comp uh, from a song or two, but I had never really kind of delved into their uh, discographies. Um, so the first thing I bought was, it's an album that I've uh, I've kind of always wanted, but it was an album that was always around. You could get it for like 10, 15 bucks. And every time I was in a store, I would find something I want more. Um, so I didn't grab it. Uh, and now... You can't get the record for under 50 bucks in good condition uh, with with the current market of uh, of records. Um, but there was a recent reissue done, so I ended up grabbing it, and it's uh, So Alone from Johnny Thunders. Um, now, this is an album, uh, I, you know, maybe I hadn't heard it before. I, I knew a couple songs off of here, um, but finally grabbed this one. Uh, fantastic album. You've got Phil Lynott on bass. Um, on a few of the tracks it, it's it's kind of a a group album so johnny thunders is obviously on every track but you've got uh steve jones on here uh a bunch of the guys from the heartbreakers uh are on here uh but but the list of everybody who played on it is is insane it's like 15 different artists and it's all guys from that scene um and then of course uh phil Lynott. uh not really from that scene but you, you know one of those guys uh, fantastic album though. If you haven't checked out Johnny Thunder's um, debut, uh, I'd give this a ten out of ten. I, I love this album. Uh, so from there, that kind of got me on the Johnny Thunder's train. Um, and I think I was talking to Bit Bop Boom, and he had mentioned uh, he really liked K Sera Sera, and that was the only other Johnny Thunder's album that the local store that even has Johnny Thunder's had. Um, so I went went ahead and grabbed that one too. This is a recent reissue that was done that they did a really good version or a, a really good job on. But uh, and I've heard that this sounds quite a bit better than the original pressing as well. But this was the last album of um, new material that Johnny Thunders released before he died. So this was eighty five or eighty six, eighty five. And uh, he ended up dying in 91. He did one more album after this, but it was a covers album um, that he did with, uh, I, I think it was Patty Paladin. But uh, this one, I mean, it's it's Johnny Thunders. It's a, it's a really killer mix of uh, punk, uh, garage, um, a little bit of new wave, uh, but but he's always had that really killer garage feel. I mean, and if you guys are familiar with Johnny Thunders, I didn't even go that far back. He, he started out as in the New York Dolls. Um, from there, in the late 70s and early 80s, um, he was in the Heartbreakers, but he also did a bunch of albums, or three or four albums, or three or four, uh, there's three or four albums of live shows that he did with Wayne Kramer from the MC5. Um but you know, kind of instrumental in that in that uh, that early punk sound uh, from the early or mid '70s. Sorry, uh, really killer album though. Uh, worth grabbing. The B side is all uh, outtakes, um, some really good ones, and a couple songs uh, that that weren't on uh, this album. Uh, but I think it's called Resurrected, Remade, and Remodeled. Uh, Casera Casera uh, Resurrected. Really killer. So next up, um, I grabbed the Heartbreaks, the, the Heartbreakers. Sorry, again, this is now a, a band I've always known about and just never checked out. You know, 
And uh, I, I had always heard uh, that the first Heartbreakers album just was badly recorded. And it, it's famously badly recorded. Um, and not in a... There's some punk albums and some metal albums, New Wave of British Heavy Metal, that the the bad recording kind of adds to the appeal. And uh, I've never heard anybody say that about the first Heartbreakers album. It was just, it was known badly recorded. Anyway, uh, Record Store Day a while back did the demo sessions. And I've seen a lot of people show it, talking about how great the demo sessions are. And it is, it's, it's fantastic. So this is the uh, LAMF um, demo sessions. Um, very similar to the original front cover with the pink border and everything. Um, really killer. So these are less punk versions of the song from the album. I would say these are more garage rock, uh, which is fantastic. Um, I, I love the versions that are on here. Uh, but after hearing this, I had to find a copy of the actual album, even though I knew it was badly recorded. And then I was, as I was researching that, um, I found out that they just recently released uh, a remaster, a AAA remastered edition. Um, apparently, they were they found the original master tapes in a in an attic somewhere. I didn't go too deep into the story, uh, but they found those original masters and they reissued it. And this thing sounds fantastic. This album is a a nine out of ten. I love this album. Again, uh, this is more punk than the demos. Still very garagey though. Um, just a, a fantastic album. And uh, if if you're into punk, um, this is kind of a must-have. And, and I would get this this uh, the Found Seventy Seven Masters Edition uh, that's been reissued. So from there, uh, you know, I kind of went into a proto punk mood. Um, I ended up pulling out the New York Dolls second album, which I had. And I thought I had the first album. Um, I looked everywhere for it. I can't find it. Um, if I had it, uh, you know, maybe it was a maybe it was a shitty price. It's been years since I had listened to the New York Dolls, so it may have been one that was just beat up, and I got rid of it. But uh, um, so I ended up went and bought the New York Dolls debut. Um, gave this a few spins. Just killer '70s glam. I think this was '71. Uh, it doesn't even say on the back here. I believe it was 71 or 72 when this came out. Um, very killer glam. Um, definitely, uh, I would call it proto-punk as well. Um, and just a, a great album. I, I love the first two albums from the New York Dolls. And then from there, it went straight down the proto-punk um, rabbit hole a little bit. Ended up grabbing one of... Probably one of my favorite albums, but uh, Raw Power from Iggy and the Stooges. I have an old beat up copy of this, so I went and grabbed this new uh, reissue that just came out. This is from a few years ago, but uh, Disc One is the original, uh, a remastered uh, copy of the Bowie mix, which is the mix we all know. Uh, and then the B side, does it say who did it? Remixed by Iggy Pop, Danny Kadar, and Bruce Dickinson. That's weird. I wouldn't have expected Bruce Dickinson, but, uh, so yeah, remixed by those three people. Um, so what made this, this album originally so great was how raw it was. Uh, I mean the raw power it, it is, it's raw. His vocals are harsh. Um, the music is harsh. Uh, and it just, it, it is kind of, uh, what punk would become, you know, and, uh, they kind of smoothed that out in the remix. And it's a, it's definitely a nicer listen, meaning, um, the original, it, it, it's a rough mix and, and the vocals are, are very, um, kind of grating, uh, which, which is what, one of the things I like about that original mix but if you want to listen to it a few times in a row, uh, it's kind of a lot on the ears. So they kind of smoothed it out. And, and for for repeated listening, I would say the remix is a little bit nicer. But if you want that that raw power um, from the album, you definitely got to go with the original Bowie mix. I mean, he knew what he was doing. But uh, just such an important album to punk. I mean, even the names of the songs, uh, Search and Destroy, Gimme Danger, Penetration, Raw Power, Death Trip. I mean, everything about this was punk rock. 
Um, just such a fantastic album. Uh, but I would recommend if you if you run across this this uh, the double version with both mixes, um, really killer to add to the collection. Uh, from there, I had to go to MC5, uh, the debut. Um, check out the jams. Uh, such a fantastic album. This is the recent Electra reissue that they did. Um, who remixed? I thought I, I must have put the sticker or the the hype sticker inside of it. Uh, maybe maybe it was Chris Bell, uh, Chris Bell, Chris Bellman. I can't remember what his name is. Uh, remixed this. He did a really good job on it, or remastered it. Uh, he did a really good job on it. It sounds fantastic. Um, highly recommend. I think this was Rhino. Was it Rhino that did this one? Yeah, R1. Um, they did a great job on this. And this is kind of, again, if you're into punk, this is a must-have album. Um, I have an original copy of this. I have an original copy of the clean version. Um, but the record's pretty beat up and uh, very well played. So I wanted to get a nicer copy of it. Uh, my original is going to go on the wall. I actually just framed it a couple days ago. Um, my original is uh, signed by Wayne Kramer. Um, it's hard to see, but it's it's signed right there. Um, so this one is going to go up on the wall pretty soon here. But yeah, uh, fantastic album. And then last but not least, um, man, the story behind this, watch the documentary from, I think it was 2009. Um, but this is Death from 1975. These guys should have been monsters in the 70s. This is such a fantastic album. Um, in 75, they hadn't released this yet. They had only released their single. Um, and they just released it at the wrong... Uh, you know, it, not that they released it at the wrong time. Um, they were a band that was... You know, usually bands are too late or they're too early. These guys were too late and too early. Um, definitely really killer proto-punk. Um, they're from Detroit, uh, you know, so, you know, you got Iggy there, you got MC5 there. Um, they should have been huge based on that, but by 75, the whole proto-punk thing had died down. Um, MC5 had basically split up the studios. I don't remember if they were, had fallen apart already, but they were about to fall apart if not. Um, and punk hadn't started yet. They were, they were too late to be part of that proto-punk scene and too early to be part of the punk scene um and that just kind of killed their career uh luckily somebody found these tapes and released them in 2009 they did that by that uh uh that that uh documentary about them um and they're finally getting the fame that they deserve uh, this album is, is a nine out of ten i love this album um Politicians in My Eyes uh, was their single. It's one of my favorite songs on here. Uh, I haven't heard their second album. They, they have two more albums of stuff that was released there that they recorded in the 70s that wasn't released. Um, so I am going to start looking for those. And I've heard they've been tour doing some tours and stuff here and there and that they're still really good live all these years later. Um, now, they, they never stopped doing music. It's three brothers. Uh, they, they had like three or four different funk bands. Um, they were releasing stuff into the 90s uh, doing uh, it, it, as a funk band. But uh, um, I've heard some of the funk stuff. It's not bad. Uh, but, man, this this is so good. Uh, this is a must-have. So uh, that's it, guys. I'll do another video, too, with some... Um, like I said, that, that comp got me uh, going down a couple different aisles. I hadn't really gone down before um, with punk, especially... Uh, you know, I grew up, growing up in, in America or in the U.S., uh, especially the, the late 80s, early 90s is when I really got into, was old enough to really get into music. And that's when I got into punk. So most of the punk I was listening to was American hardcore. Um, and I never went back other than maybe The Clash and a couple of other bands. I never really delved into the 70s uh, uh, UK punk or even the, the punk that was uh, coming out of the U.S. Um, prior to the, the hardcore scene. So uh, I'm kind of delving into some of that stuff in the power pop now. Uh, so I'll be doing some more videos with stuff like that. But uh, um, that's it for now. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, take care, BC. I'll see you soon.